So let us discuss about the first law of thermodynamics. In first law of thermodynamics, we are dealing with uh, uh, the work done and change in internal energy and heat given to a system. Normally, we can uh, explain the first law as suppose we have a system and we uh, give Q amount of uh, heat to the system. So after taking the amount of heat, of course, when the heat is absorbed by the system, its temperature increases. So there is a, as a result of this absorption of heat, there is a tendency to increase its temperature. Of course, if the, uh, also the system will do some work. So the, uh, we know that the heat given to the system or the amount of energy given to a system is, uh, if it is notated by the letter Q, and we know that uh, the internal energy is uh, normally measured as its temperature. Internal energy have a lot of parts. Uh, it have uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, etc. Nuclear energy, atomic energy, all are included in the internal energy of the system. But Normally, internal energy is the uh, measurement of kinetic energy. Of course, kinetic energy is a function of temperature. We normally measure the internal energy as the temperature of the system. So, if the system changes after taking Q amount of heat, the system changes from in, uh, its uh, uh, internal energy state U1 to U2. The change in internal energy is U2 minus U1. So, normally we measure the change in internal energy. The, uh, the change in internal energy is uh, measured as the change in temperature. Okay. So, it's a function of, of course, internal energy is a function of temperature. So, in first law, suppose Q amount of heat is given to a system and the system used some amount of heat to increase its internal energy from u1 to u2 so what is the change in internal energy that is u2 minus u1 so the heat is used to in increase the internal energy and also the system will do some work using that amount of heat absorbed so so it can be written as q is equal to u2 minus u1 plus w this is known as the first law of thermodynamics suppose Delta Q amount of heat is absorbed. Delta Q is very small amount. Okay, so delta Q amount of heat is absorbed by the system as a result of its absorption. Suppose its internal energy is cha cha change is uh, du, and also the system do some work that is delta W. We can write de delta Q is equal to du plus delta W. So normally we written first law in this form also or we can write dq is equal to du plus pdv we already studied that what is the work done by the system is nothing but p into dv dv is a change in volume so we can write dq is equal to du plus pdv okay so the first law of thermodynamics is nothing but the law of conservation of energy in law of conservation of energy we already studied that the energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Similarly, when we give some amount of energy to the system, it will utilize that inter energy or it will utilize that heat to increase its energy, that is internal energy, and also use some amount of heat to do some mechanical work, DW. Suppose we have a piston like this. Suppose this is a piston and there is a working substance is here. If we give a Q amount of DQ amount of heat to the system, using that DQ amount of the system, the system will, there is an increase in the temperature of the system that will contribute its change in internal energy. Also, the system will push this piston in the outward direction. So, the, there is an expansion. So, uh, work is Work is, uh, work is done by the system to for expansion. So that can be written as dq is equal to du plus pdv. Okay. Normally work, work done by the system is taken as positive. So significance of first law of thermodynamics. Uh, so it will give a concept of internal energy. It introduces the concept of internal energy. 
and also it is applicable to any process by which the system undergo a physical or chemical change. So we can apply the first law uh, to all processes. Okay. Uh, but there will be, uh, of course, there will be some change, uh, ch change in the equation uh, due to uh, in different process like isothermal, isobaric, isochoric. There are different processes like the first law can be applicable to can apply to all the systems. Whether it may be isothermal, whether it may be adiabatic, it is applicable to all type of system. So the uh, depends upon the conditions, there will be small changes in the first law. Okay, so we have to rewrite the first law according to that conditions. Second one, it, it will give you an idea about the internal energy. What is the change in internal energy? That is Q minus W. So it provides an equation for the change in internal energy. So also, it uh, this method is used to determine the change in that are the applications of the or the significance of the first law. Okay, then what are the limitations of the first law of thermodynamics? So this uh, 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 this law will not specify the condition under which the system can use its heat energy to produce some mechanical work. According to this first law of thermodynamics, it will not specify when the heat will uh, absorb and when it will do some work etc. It will not give any idea about that. And also, uh, it does not say how much heat energy can be converted into work. Whether full the total heat absorb, whether the total heat absorb can be converted into work or not, the uh, the first law will not uh, say anything about the conversion of heat into heat energy into work. Okay, that are the limitations of the first law of the man. Atre amount the heat in a work kaki system ne matam inna ne kuchh the first law unnu pariy nela. Ada din do limitation hai. Okay. So let us discuss about the specific heat of a specific heat or specific heat of a gas. So what is uh, specific heat of a material? Normally, suppose m mass, suppose a substance of mass m have a q amount of heat required to rise its tem its temperature through delta t degrees. Okay. So what will be the heat required to in, increase the temperature of unit mass of a substance through you um, through one degree or th uh, through unit temperature so or through one degree it is known as the specific heat of a uh, that material specific heat of that material suppose Delta Q is or Q is the heat required to, to rise the temperature of a mass through delta T degree. That is, M mass or la vastu inde temperature and tem. That is, Q amount of heat is required. Uh, body of mass M body de, temperature delta T degree increase in heat than Q angle. What will be uh, the amount of uh, heat required to rise the temperature of unit mass? Unit mass the temperature uh, increase in heat and Q by M IQ. And uh, unit temperature, delta T temperature increase in unit ma mass of the body the temperature, delta T degree increase in the temperature on a cube. Angry an angle, or one degree, that is unit mass in the temperature, one degree increase in the heat at Rayana. So that is given by Q divided by M delta T. So this is known as the specific heat capacity of that material. So, so this is uh, exactly the same in the case of liquids and uh, solids. But in the case of gases, we know that C is equal to Q divided by M delta T. But when we compress the gas without gi giving any heat, there is a tendency for increase its temperature. So, this term becomes zero. So, uh, that is the 
so that is a problem connected with the uh, finding of the specific heat capacity of uh, gases so normally we express the specific heat capacity of uh, gases at specific uh, conditions okay that is known as cv and cp so similarly when we expand the gas uh, freely uh, it increases without its temperature decreases without uh, any rise it may expand without any rise in the temperature so at, at that case delta t is equal to 0 so so q divided by mc m0 that may be infinity so due to these two reasons we are normally uh, specify heat of a gas at certain condition that is uh, we, normally we calculate the specific heat of a gas at constant pressure and specific heat at, of a gas at constant volume. So in order to keep, uh, keep uh, this uh, heat uh, pressure constant and in order to keep the volume constant, it have uh, it needs some amount of heat. Okay. So Cp and C. So what is Cp? Cp is specific heat at constant pressure. So this is... Uh, uh, defined as the amount of heat required to rise the temperature of unit mass of a gas through 1 Kelvin at constant pressure. So, Cp is equal to delta Q by delta T or dou T. This is small amount. So, we are using this delta, delta Q by dou T at constant pressure. Or this can be written as dou Q by dou T also at constant pressure. So, the specific heat at constant volume is written as delta Q divided by dou T at constant volume. It is the amount of heat required to rise the temperature of unit mass of a gas through 1 Kelvin at constant volume. So, this is known as Cv and this is known as Cp. Okay. So, from the first law, we know that dQ is equal to du plus pdv. So, let us analyze this equation at different conditions. What happened to this equation at, at uh, uh, in the case of an ISO, uh, is, uh, if the temperature is constant, that is isothermal process. So, in the case of an isothermal process, we know that the temperature is always a constant in the case of an isothermal process. So, in order to keep the temperature of a system constant, okay. Heat may absorb by the system or heat may rejected uh, by the system to make the temperature constant. One thing is clear that in the case of an isothermal system, the temperature is always constant. So, what is du? du is measured as the change in temperature. If there is no change in temperature, du is equal to 0. So, in the case of an isothermal process, du is equal to 0. At that case, the first law is equal to dq is equal to pdv. So, this is the uh, first law in the case of an isothermal process. In isothermal process what happened? dq is equal to pd. So, let us discuss uh, what about the adiabatic process. So, in the case of an adiabatic process, we know that in adiabatic process, the walls are insulating one. There will not be any absorption or rejection of heat from the system to the surrounding. So, the amount of heat entered or the leaving from the system is equal to 0. At that time, what will be dq? dq is equal to 0 in the case of an adiabatic process. So, when we write the first law of equation for adiabatic process, we can write that du plus pdv is equal to 0. So, what about iso, or iso, uh, iso uh, choric process? In isochoric process, we know that the volume is constant. Volume means constant in dv is equal to 0. So, in the case of an isochoric process, dq is equal to du. And in the case of an isobaric process, there is no change, dq is equal to du plus pd. Okay, these are the, uh, uh, the first law of uh, uh, thermodynamics at different conditions. In, uh, when it is, when the system is in isothermal process, isobaric process, isochoric process, or is there. Uh, is a diabetic process. So, we discussed about the first law at different uh, processes. Okay. So, now we are uh, uh, discussing about the application of first law of thermodynamics. Here, we are going to apply the first, uh, what are the application of first law of thermodynamics. Here, we are discussing 
the proof of Mayer's equation. You know that Mayer's equation is Cp minus Cv is equal to R is the Mayer's equation. Now we are going to derive the Mayer's equation from the first law of thermodynamics. That is the one of the application of first law of thermodynamics. So, so uh, you should be careful while doing these operations. Okay. So first of this, let us take the internal energy as a function of V and T. Okay, of course, internal energy is a function of P, V and T. We already fixed two terms, V and T. So, there is no need of fixing pressure because P, V is equal to NRT. So, from this equation, suppose we are taking you uh, internal energy a function, a function of V and T. So, what will be the small change in the internal energy do you, do you, that may be due to change in volume or it may be due to change in temperature. So, it can be written as du is equal to dou u by dou v at constant temperature into dv and also plus uh, this is the change in the internal energy due to temperature so that can be written as dou u by dou, dou t here we are taking volume as a constant into dt so du can be written as dou u by dou v at constant temperature into dv plus dou u by dou t at constant volume into t. Here we, we, are, uh, we, we are calculating the change in u, okay, internal energy due to change in volume and change in temperature, okay. So, this can be written as this. So, we already know from the first law of thermodynamics is that dq is equal to du plus e dw or we can write dq is equal to du dw can be written as pdv so next we will going to we are, we are going to substitute du from this equation okay so we can write a dq is equal to du plus pdv that can be written as dq is equal to dou u by dou v e into dv plus dou u by dou t into dt plus pdv and we are dividing this through dt so we can write dq by dt is equal to dou u by dou v is here into dv by dt so we are dividing with dt so here dt dou u by dou t at constant volume into dt divided by dt. So, that term cancels. So, here only there is only one term that is dou u by dou t at constant volume. Plus, here we have p dv. When we uh, divide this with dt, you will get p into dv by dt. So, that is the equation. So, we are taking dv by dt is here in this equation also here. So, we are taking it common outside. So, dq by dt is equal to dou u by dou t at constant volume. So, this is dou u by dou t at constant volume plus p, we are taking dv by dt outside. So, p plus dou u by dou v at constant temperature into dv by dt. It is constant to these two terms. So, we can take dv by dt outside. So, you now we are applying the condition, if the gas is heated and const under constant volume, that is dV by dt at constant volume means, so we have to take constant volume condition, we have to apply the constant volume condition for this equation. So, this term will be dQ by dt at constant volume. It's already the term is du by dt at constant volume. It is already the, okay, in the, all this equation, it is the that dou u by dou t is always under constant volume. Plus p into dou u by dou v into dv by dt. So, what will be dv by dt at constant volume? Constant volume means dv is equal to 0. So, this term will be vanished. So, you will get the expression as dq by dt at constant volume is equal to this term. That is dou u by dou t at constant volume. 
So what is dQ by dt at constant volume? It is nothing but Cv. We already discussed that Cv is the heat the, uh, the, uh, the Cv is equal to dQ by dt at constant volume. So this is dQ by dt at constant volume is equal to Cv. In, in this particular case, dQ by dt at constant volume is equal to dou u by dou t at constant volume. That is equal to Cv. So, suppose the heat is, uh, the gas is heated at constant pressure. So, we have to apply the constant pressure condition to this equation. Okay. So, you will get dou Q by dou T at constant pressure. This term is always in constant volume. We can replace this term by Cv. So, dQ by dT at constant pressure is equal to Cv. This term is replaced by Cv. Plus, this equation is P plus dou U by dou V into dV by dT at constant pressure. So, here we are applying the condition. Uh, dV, in this case, dQ by dT at constant, when dQ by dT is at constant pressure, this, should, this is in constant pressure. So, when we apply or when we heat, heat uh, the system under constant pressure, the equation is converted into this type equation. So, in the case of an ideal gas, we know that at this is this term, you know, this is already dou u by dou t at constant volume, and here also dou u by dou t at constant volume. Here also dou u by dou t at constant volume. What will be change in internal energy at constant volume? This term is already zero because at constant temperature there will not be any change in internal energy. So in the case of an ideal gas dou u by dou v at constant temperature is equal to 0. So, we can rewrite this equation as this. What is dq by dt at constant pressure? It is nothing but Cp. So, we replace, uh, we replace dq by dt at constant pressure as Cp plus Cv plus P into this term vanishes P into dv by dt at constant pressure. So, next we are going to calculate what is dV by dT at constant pressure. So, in order to calculate dV by dT at constant pressure, we have to write the ideal gas equation that is PV is equal to RT. So, when we differentiate this equation, partial differential that is P, or a term in a constant, I can differentiate here. Next, that is a constant, I can term in a differentiate here. So, here P taken as a constant. So, P dV at constant pressure, all these things are up, happen at constant pressure. So, P dV at constant pressure plus V dP. When we differentiate, uh, uh, first we differentiate dV by taking P as a constant. So, P dV at constant pressure plus we taking V as a constant differentiating P. So, V dP at constant pressure is equal to R into dT. So, at constant pressure, what is dP change in pressure at constant pressure is 0. So, this term will vanish. So, you will get P dV at constant pressure is equal to R into dT. So, this equation is P into dV by dT. When we uh, divide this, when we taking dT into this side, we can write the equation P into dV by dT is equal to R. So, we can replace P into dV by dT at constant pressure by R. So, this equation will become Cp is equal to Cv plus R or Cp minus Cv is equal to R. So, hence we proved the Mayer's equation from first law of thermodynamics. Now, we will already uh, adiabatic equation, uh, adiabatic process in the equation of state discussing and there is no adiabatic process in the equation of state that is P varies to gamma is a constant. Now, we will derive or we can derive the equation of state for an adiabatic process that is P varies to gamma is a constant from first law of thermodynamics. So, that is the adiabatic equation. So, now we are going to find out the adiabatic equation from the first law of thermodynamics. So, we know that from the first law of thermodynamics, delta Q is equal to du plus P dV. We already uh, study, uh, we already discussed that for adiabatic process, there is no heat absorption or rejection. So, delta Q is equal to 0. So, we can rewrite this equation as 0 is equal to du plus P dV. Or we can write du is equal to mm -hmm. 
So we know that what is CV? CV is dou Q by dou T at constant volume. So when we find out dou Q by dou T at constant volume from this equation we know that uh, dou Q by dou T is equal to dou U by dou T. Dou Q by dou T. CV is a specific heat capacity at constant volume. So when we can calculate the specific heat capacity at constant volume from the first law of thermodynamics. So now here delta Q is equal to du plus PdV. At constant volume what happened to PdV that term vanishes. So when we take delta Q by delta T at constant volume you will get this as dou U by dou V at constant volume. So what is delta Q by delta T at constant volume that is nothing but CV at constant volume. So CV is equal to or CV is itself constant for constant volume specific heat capacity at constant volume. So this delta Q by delta T or uh, CV can be written as du by dt at constant volume. So from or, uh, for, or we can write du is equal to CV into dt. Uh, CV is nothing but du by dt at constant volume or that is equal to CV. So du can be written as CV into dt. So we can write, rewrite this dq as 0 is equal to dv sorry cv dt plus pdv okay for one mole of a gas the ideal gas equation can be written as pv is equal to rt okay so when we differentiate this equation what happened pdv plus vdp is equal to rdt so substituting uh, this in equation 24 we can write this is equal to we are going to write dt as pdv plus vdp divided by r so, here in this equation, we are going to substitute for dt. So, that is equal to 0 is equal to Cv into what is dt. From this equation, dt is nothing but Pdv plus Vdp divided by R. So, this is equal to Cv into Pdv plus Vdp divided by R plus this term is the Pdv. PDV. So, this, is, this can be written as Cv into PDV plus VDP into R PDV. So, R is came from this expression. So, when we take R outside, we have to multiply this with R. Then only we can take R into that side, left hand side of the equation. So, when uh, when we take an R from here, we have to multiply PRDV divided by R. So, the equation will like here. So, what is R? R is nothing but CP, CP minus CV. So, normally equation le, uh, R in the CP minus CV in the Gurtha number equation in CV PDV and CV VDP is also here. So, we are going to give an R as CP minus CV. So, this is CP minus CV into PDV. So, this is the equation. So, this is now this is our equation that is 0 is equal to CV PDV. Plus CV VDP plus CP minus CV into PDV. So when when we distribute this or when we apply distribution law to this case, you will get C, CV PDV here, CV VDP. So this is CP PDV minus CV PDV. Here CV PDV, CV PDV get cancelled. So you will get CV VDP plus CP PDV. So, when we divide through CP, uh, CV, what you will get? 0 is equal to DP divided by, we divide through PVDV. Okay. PVDV only equation and divide chain. Ho. If we VDP, we P the denominator of P. PVDP, VDP already will cancel. If we VDP, PVDP uh, divide chain, ho. P cancel. Ho. About end, end down CP by CV, about end down, they call it DV by V. So, this is this will become DP by P plus CP by CV into DV by V. So, what is CP by CV? We already know that CPV, CP by CV is nothing but gamma. That, okay, if this gamma is known as the ratio of specific. This can be written as dp by p into gamma dv is equal to 0. Equation like name are dp by p plus cp by cv is gamma, gamma into dv by d. 
so when we integrate this equation you will get when integrate you go what is dp by p when we integrate dp by p you will get ln of t natural logarithm of p gamma avade inde idu nu vanna natural logarithm of volume so that is a constant so we know that ln p plus ln v ln v gamma ln v nu parayumba endavu gamma ennu parayna ivadnu maatumba v ide power like irukku so l ln v is to gamma is a constant so we can rewrite this equation as ln p um ln v is to gamma in l form l in common i p v is to gamma namukku ariya ln de properties idu multiplication nammal ln le edumbe inga varu okay so this is ln p v p v is to gamma is a constant from this expression p v is to gamma is a constant ee expression nanna p v is to gamma ennu parayunnathu constant aanu enna adiabatic process inde equation of state nammal kandupidikkunnathu engena equation of state of adiabatic process p v is to gamma ennathu nammal adinu shesham maati kelidittundayirunnu p ku pagaram v um t um p um t um okay so this is the equation